joining us, everyone. I'm Katie, I'm based in London. I'm a digital program curator at Agora. And Alice Scope is a curator as well. And she's currently based in Kyiv, Ukraine. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Tonight, I'm delighted to be joined by curator, educator, and cultural producer, Alice Scope. In 2017, Alice founded AKT in Kyiv, an experimental art space supporting emerging artists with a focus on virtual reality. And in 2019, she co-founded a digital art education program called Riza.today in Kenya. And as a fellow curator, I'm a huge fan of Alice's work and all the exciting online and offline collaborations she's worked on throughout the pandemic. For example, in early 2020, she founded Cultural Policy, an e-curatorial platform that fosters and empowers di digital artists. The two first projects she's worked on have been Post Human Island and Web Torah. Both projects are really amazing in how they take very detailed and creative approach in its creation of speculative realities. Today we'll be focusing on the first project, Post Human Island, and the work is just so rich in detail with its character development, all the backstories, there's also a writing involved, sound, visual depth, and it really feels like a multi-sensorial like, escape from the confines of lockdown and gallery closures. So for Post Human Island, the artists were tasked with creating residents who are stuck on an island, spending their time isolated in rooms with unlimited online access, which may sound familiar to many of us right now. Alice is going to tell us a bit about her research into the project, her inspirations, and her experience building speculative worlds and constructing 3D characters. So please join me in, join me in welcoming Alice. Hi, everyone. So today I briefly want to talk about my project called Post Human Island and about speculative future and especially how digital art can make social change, which is actually the question I asking myself every day and I still don't have an answer. So I want to start with the with what of uh, Benjamin Breton, who is architectural and design terrorist and program director of Strelka Institute, which is in Moscow. So the role of the speculation is not only to propose how it could be, but to offer how it should be. And I also would add how it should not be. Thinking about the speculation, I'm always thinking how the future might be and what future we don't want to. Also, I went to deep and I started thinking like how in ancient philosophies, somebody talked about speculative knowledge and Aristotle, he said that like speculative knowledge is intellectual observation, which I also can relate to and uh, have some similar thoughts that traditional design proposed the answers to the question and speculative and critical design propose more asking questions and observe the reality. Quick slide about the history that speculative design actually was born in the 90s, where designer began to question their role in consumerism impact on the planet. But even before, my favorite writer, Dougal Dixon, he brought actually 210 books. I, I don't know how it's even possible, but he did it about speculative evolution. And one of my favorite books called Man After Man, A Zoology of the Future, which is science fiction and a speculative evolution book. And it shows... Uh, human evolution set from uh, 200 years in the future to 5 million years. And uh, I would love to show you more creatures that I really like. And this book by Dougal Dixon was the main inspiration for me to actually this scenario with my friend and uh, colleague Michael Burrs, who based in Los Angeles, uh, about post-human island. So those creatures were the main inspiration to start Post Human Island, which was released, I believe it was released three months ago or so when I was in Ukraine during the quarantine. And we created the world where Post Human Island show like the world with five transformed humans who were volunteers and they were locked in an island uh, in a corporate uh, environment of the corporation called Newbie Solutions. And the project speculates the evolution of human biology, psychology under the influence of artificial intelligence. So I would say it's like functional thing, uh, a fiction. And we wrote the whole story about how it happened that six decades ago, the group that know as Dr. Trust, which was 
actually we were thinking about Trump when he was still president in the United States, was trying to manipulate the post-humans. And I would love you to introduce them first, and then I will explain more about the project. So we have five future humans, five post-humans that we created with five international artists. And first one is the Vivian by artists from South Korea uh, and my really good friend, Van De Kim. Uh, so Vivi is a mother and daughter two in one who decided to optimize, like, to optimize her life and to check how it will be if she and daughter will be in one body. Actually, Wednesday, she is mother in real life. And she said to me that she would love to explore the topic of the, the solution of how optimize the time with her daughter because she wants to work, but also she wants to spend time with her daughter. What if her daughter will be uh, with her as one body? And uh, each creature has their bio and diary. I'll show you later. So next creature is Imago by Ukrainian artist Maria Dmitrova. So Imago, she was locked in a room also for 20 years and she was in the circumstances as self-obsession. And she also wrote a diary, which is, you can see in the project. So Flexi is the creature by Huntress, my friend from Los Angeles. And she is a former stripper who loves, actually, who loves partying and who is always single. So in this project, we have a ton of prototypes of people and we were trying to found what actually, the main question of the project, what is humans we want to take uh, with us to the future? And almost last one is Specimen, who is actually decided to spend all his life in meditation and relaxation. So this work was made by also my friend Chris Collins, and uh, he explored the topic of no stress life. And for each creature, we created, the release was on the felon, we created the article from Dr. Angara, who is actually saying that Mr. Trump, he is manipulating future humans and he is trying to actually use their skills. So each creature also has like their own bio occupation before the experiment, uh, like Vivi was part-time acupuncturist and also relationship status and uh, unusual skills, hobby, gardening, favorite drink. And they also have their diary where the artists were able to express themselves and to tell about their emotions during the project. So coming back to the topic of speculative, of speculative design, speculative art, I really like this book called Speculative Everything. If you haven't read it yet, I would uh, highly recommend. And I like this manifesto by Anthony Dunn and Fiona Rebbe. And A is like traditional design, B is like speculative design and critical design. And some things like uh, traditional design and traditional art is like kind of problem solving and uh, speculative design is like problem finding. And I really like this idea that in speculation, you don't have to uh, give the answers, but you can just ask the questions and design for debate, but not for the production and just to not make us buy and make us think. This is two difference between like traditional design and speculative design that it makes us think. Okay, to moving to the post-human island. So the latest creature is like NBS by a London-based artist. And it's like an, an accident where what happened was the creatures was the mouse who was just not a volunteer, but also like random accident on the island. Okay, so why I was showing this, because those creatures were before the island was happening, and now we are trying to develop the island and how it looked like, and we decided that the island will be on the Philippines, and it's like a real location there, and we were exploring the flora and fauna of Philippines, and we're trying to see who's going to navigate the island, and we created Alicia 60 who is actually, we had no idea how to name her. I decided to name just by my name. <laughs> and she works for Nubis Solution for Evil Corporation. In this project, we are trying to find the answers uh, to the questions, how good is to be a part of big corporation? I used to work on TV channel in Ukraine, and it's like a gigantic corporation. I, I was a part of this like for four years or five. And I remember this feeling when you actually started giving the answers and started think as a corporate person. And that's exactly 
in the vibe we were trying to show in post-human island that how much do we need the corporations in the future and before i will show you some things from post-human island i also want to show you this video i really like in this lecture and performance by lee young the architect lee young so just quick part and we follow the amazon prime drone that's zipping about above us and drifting above this sea of neon haze the drones have become as ubiquitous as pigeons and we customize our drones like we once did our phones and they follow us around always with a smile and fluffy ears and 16 millimeter propeller blades and the air is filled with the digital confetti of our every desire and the skin of the city is warm freckled with a thousand lights and the traffic lights flock at rush hour and our packages rain down in an amazon hailstorm and the rumble of drone propellers have become a new natural soundscape to this city of a new generation and they deliver our pizzas hot dog stuffed crusts is how we like them in city everywhere and all the dogs in the city are walked by drones now the city says think of the time saving smiles I really like uh, this lecture that he did in Mutech conference. It's, uh, it's more, it, it, it's also inspiring me to think about the future and how we want or don't want it to be. And I'm asking myself why I love speculation so much because I feel that we live in virtual world right now more than even in physical. And sometimes in physical world, we cannot deal with the government, especially in Ukraine, I would say. You cannot change as much just so fast so if changing something in virtual work can work and i think it can work in physical work after all i'll show you a quick brief from post human island which is not released yet and we also developing the the idea is to show the corporate world and also it's just like a quick preview to give a feeling of the isolated world how it can be if we all lose the access to each other's country how it for, for example right now it's not possible to come to the u.s for the people who even want to because the embassy is closed and you can simply not get a visa so this word is also showing the isolation and the separation from all the world welcome to Bos the first cohabitation of boss humans welcome to boss human island the first cohabitation of boss humans Les, are you still there Nine. Five humans who we have helped adapt into their best natural past human selves. We monitor their changes to learn about what might help humanity. We have the best and most reliable network connection on the entire planet. And so it's just a brief introduction how it will look like with which is not released yet. And also back to the story of speculation, we have the scientists who are actually checking on the post humans and as an part of corporation we, we think about brainwashing and we decided to develop like ear washing machine which is looks like this and being a part of a cooperative field it's uh, really interesting for me how sometimes we just follow some big idea even this idea is not ours so the main questions of the project is like what are we as humans taking with us into the future what kind of human rights does a post-human have? What kind of mental health issues might exist for the future beings? And also the information that we are taking right now from the inter with internet, what internet blindly willing upon the human mind of tomorrow. Honestly, I've been thinking those, uh, about those questions and I don't really have an answer yet. It's just rhetorical questions for me that I'm uh, asking in my speculative projects, which is still in uh, progress but the most interesting question for me how the digital art can make social change i think it's more about the knowledge that we get even if we were going to build some word which is not real but we will get some knowledge from that can knowledge ever be neutral and i i don't think so i think every single information that we eating that we're getting from someone it's it makes changes in us and uh, the experience with me when in Los Angeles we had a BLM protest and I was not familiar with BLM movement because I'm not American and during the protest we and the art where artists were actually distributing I got familiar with the 
movement and decided to support it. So I think sometimes the information can just work in us without our permission. And this, I think, the most uh, interesting thing for me. Okay, for now, I think it's uh, this is it. Thank you, Alice. I had a quick question I saw in the chat from Dean, just about the recent, the new release of Post Human Island that you just showed us a sneak peek of. Is it going to be a film or a virtual world that people can visit physically? So we're still thinking about it. I think we want to make it as a VR world because we talk with the next museum and maybe we'll get an exhibition there. And uh, it's nice to have an interactive experience. So we still think about it because I work with filmmaker and he's he released ton of films and uh, right now it looks like film more. But I would love it to be more interactive. Congratulations, uh, by the way, about the the work. It's really it's really cool, really inspiring as well. And I think I think it'd be really cool if like people can access and even if they don't have VR, like even on a computer, kind of like a sort of like a virtual museum, so they can go and get the information and see all the object and stuff. But then I think so a film can be really cool because then you can actually get the point and like the main subject that you really want people to to take away that's very true honestly uh, i'm so tired of the um, art which is not um, asking me anything and uh, just like some cute pictures and i'm painting by myself in vr and sometimes i'm just painting some abstract things and after all i'm asking myself okay it looks cool but what is the meaning of all of it maybe i, I just want to go too deep with that but that's exactly how i think about mm -hmm. interactive art it can make people think more than film probably as a so maybe, the, maybe the project is, it seems like quite large enough for maybe it to exist on the different forms as well like a virtual world that people can walk in and the film and then even some other stuff why not i feel it's you can get like a, a lot of different sort of layer and i think the film as a medium of course it's uh, still working but uh, i had an exhibition just a week ago and it was an animation and i came and i look at this and i wanted it was my animation with the artist and i look at this and i was like i don't want it to be just animation on the screen i wanted to talk to me more and um, that's what i'm thinking about this project i don't want it to be just like separated from people and you just can look and observe i wanted to talk to people more and people can talk to, to alicia or to one of those creatures great i'm really happy to see that the narrative of the work is for post human island is continuing and we're going to see more about the corporate side of the project. I had a quick question actually about that because I know you worked with a lot of collaborators on the project and you're working closely with a writer as well named Michael Barth for Post Human Island specifically and how is the narrative kind of developed and built up together? How do you work together to progress? Uh, sure honestly every time I'm working with someone we just like getting everything done we had like ton of meetings and then after all I have only one question I'm just reading this all and it's like, okay, where is the meat? Uh, even I'm, It's like, where is the meat? Where is the ideas? Every, are we still working on this and we're still like doing our research about how the AI can influence future humans. So um, answering your question, how is it going? It's still every day we write something and then it's like, okay, it doesn't work. Where is the meat? I don't feel like that it's uh, strong enough or that it's good enough. But uh, collaboration, we collab with the musicians and writers, screenwriters and uh, visual artists for this project. And I think tomorrow I'm meeting some singer from Ukraine and she will do the intro for Post Human Island. So maybe there are going to be some uh, vocal. For the, oh, for the new project? Yeah, 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 yeah. For, for this project, for the introduction, because right now Alicia, is, her voice is like by, generated by artificial intelligence. But we wanted to her sound more real with some glitches because she has a personality. She is seven years old. Her system is always updating. And when you and that's funny when you're trying to make a project like made by AI, it doesn't work like you want it to work. So I think the real human will give her the voice. I have another question in the meantime. Just it was really interesting to hear about your sci-fi influences and the different books i'm definitely going to check out the scottish writer Dougal dixon Doug. like the, the drawings and the artwork are so amazing mm -hmm. so about the sci-fi i'm honestly not a huge fan of sci-fi because all sci-fi looks the same i think so it just they look really similar 
But the one movie that I always remember the characters, and I remember when I was a kid, I watched this movie called Total Recall, I believe. And they have they had the really weird looking characters like three breasted lady. And I remember that I was always fascinating more by the characters, but not by the scenario and environment. That's really cool. So you were going into like how the post human island prompts us to think about what we might want to bring into our reality. And just thinking about like the characters that are involved in the project. What's like a feature of the island that you would want to bring into our that you think would improve our current lived reality? What would you make? In this post human island, we decided to design some offline tree where you can actually because in the scenario, post human island has the best internet on the entire planet, and so we were thinking about some offline tree where you can discover your pre-internet self, and we want to like make the system doesn't work from one to five minutes and the viewer can actually choose what kind of what how much how many minutes do you want offline or how many minutes you want to talk to your mom or to someone that you missed and i think in the every single project i am curating i'm always thinking because i work in digital art field uh, sometimes i'm so tired of this especially like during the pandemic every everyone goes digital and it made me more physical and uh, less present on uh, Instagram or somewhere else. I don't know why. Maybe because now we pushed to be in digital world. But so as for answering your question, in Post Human Island, we will have offline tree where you can book from one to five minutes, uh, completely offline. That's my favorite thing there. And also ear washing machine where the scientists are getting like washed, their brain getting washed. It's also interesting. I like how it's one to five minutes because anything longer would just be too much of a time off from <laughs> digital. <laughs> okay. Talking of speculation, I was reading a lot about speculative design and speculative art and this project called Natural History of the Enigma by Eduard Keck. So he decided to develop a new form of life. And he produced through molecular uh, biology and his DNA this flower, which is he said like looks like a, a human a human skin. And there is also AI as Hasegawa. I want to deliver a shark that after 2065, the our world will be overpopulated, and we would need to stop making babies, and we just can produce like the animals, which is right now in the red book cool thank you for sharing i would love to listen like about the practice of people who are maybe in the chat i'm, I'm curious i know you're a curator as well Dean. sorry i was i was trying to i was trying to find another project that i saw recently that was called feel my metaverse by Kagan. Yes, which which I thought was interesting as well, but also more under the form of a video and then certain installation. So I was trying to find that. And I thank you for reminding us of the Eduardo Catch project. Uh, he was one of the like first artists when I started, well, where I was like looking at when I started to work in the digital art. So I was like his project with the rabbit that is, I'm sure, like still like questionable. I really like the, this kind of interesting kind of very blurry boundary between what is actually real and what is part of the story and mm -hmm. how it actually doesn't really matter what is actually the truth and I think it's or maybe it didn't matter 10 years ago but I don't know if that is still relevant now when we are surrounded by fake news where actually maybe it's a bit less fun to not know the veracity of, of how a project is done so it'd be really cool to continue the discussion okay. after uh, I think I will show a little bit more of Post Human Island uh, video content and like uh, will so Vivi who is made by a South Korean artist and my friend Wednesday Kim we have post stages is like her school and her circumstances and this video is about how was she mutated so as I said every single creature was locked in a room for 23 years in different circumstances so once these creatures was locked in a room with the circumstances of stress and she was actually exploring how it will be to be like locked in the room like during the isolation we all have been there and still still there 
locked in the room with the stress. So her circumstances were stress. And this is the video how she's mutated really quick. Working on this project, it's like have a narrative and every single character has like separate narrative from the main one. A lot of TikTok videos of people drinking mugwort tea. Oh, just, really? <laughs> that was one of the focuses on of her garden. And it's apparently like a big stress reliever and like psychedelic gives you some psychedelic effects as well. I still didn't do any TikToks though. <laughs> I've just been consuming them as well, but making I've been consuming them as well. Yeah. Because so much Clubhouse, TikTok, Instagram, all this mm-hmm. stuff. And sometimes I feel that I want to come back to physical world more when I work with digital art. So we'll see how it goes. If Vivi was created in the circumstances of stress were the other characters did they have their own kind of circumstances they were responding to sure so the specimen who is made by chris collins the artist based in chicago he was in the circumstances like relaxation and he is actually a target grade but speaking of post humans he was a was a scientist who is exploring target grades that's why he looked like this so I can think I can guess, jump into the video for a second as well. This is like post-human island reception. So it's just like an intro, how he isn't entering the island. And here's the... I need that. Also, you told me that you were reading that book, right? The Road Less Traveled, that this mm-hmm. message is reading. Oh, pardon. Yeah, so this is just the small part of was human island that uh, I wanted to show and maybe to summarize the things about speculative future and speculation in general because this topic is like uh, endless I would say and a ton of people discovering it like on a deep level I just created this idea that uh, we need speculation to develop critical tools and methods uh, to raising awareness and open questions And this is my goal right now in all my projects, like asking the questions and build the world that we cannot build in a physical space. We can do it virtually. And I think uh, that's amazing to talk about idea of like mental health, how it will be with all the devices and information we're getting right now, and also the diversity and uh, all the topics that uh, actually I haven't seen before when I was living in Ukraine. And uh, now it's more interesting for me to explore those topics, which is like when you become internet, more international and work with international artists. Dean had a, had a question about how long you've been working on this project. I don't think it's been very long, though. Long. It's been, we started in the beginning of the pandemic, not beginning, March, April. In July, maybe July, and now it's some March or April, almost April. It's been a year, but it was like different stages. First, we developed the characters. Now we're developing the island. Then we want to develop the whole experience when actually uh, you can navigate yourself in the island and uh, meet the corporate structure and just uh, feel yourself as a part of corporate structure. And ask the main question is what. A- are we as humans taking with us into the future? Which is actually interesting for me. I was thinking about it today (laughs) as well. Great, thank you. If anyone else has any other questions, please do feel free to join us. Oh, Alice Bucknell has a question. Is post-human island more of an escapist speculation or a critique of wellness culture, etc.? What's the relationship, if any, between and between utopia and dystopia? It's a good question. I would not say that this is critique of wellness to be a wellness culture, to be honest. I, But it's like very interesting uh, perspective. And I would love to know why did you think like this? Because we didn't think about it at all. We more think about like the circumstances we are putting those creatures and about the idea of isolation and what is going to happen if we're going to be isolated in our separate countries. So this is more, I would say, like escapist, escapist speculation more than critique of wellness. But Alice, I would like to know why did you decide it this way? That's interesting. Hey, sure. I guess like I showed up late, so sorry about that. But I was referring like directly to the clips that you just showed now. 
with the creature in that like luxury hotel getting like a massage and doing like yogi breathing exercises <laughs> i was just wondering if that was like a tongue and cheek like satirical reference oh. to that or or like what the kind of stakes were that makes mm-hmm. sense I see. Actually, the main idea when Chris, the artist who made that video, this, uh, were discussing this character, the main idea was that we are all so tired and we have no time for this yogi wellness life. What if we would only have this? Would it be enough or not? What if we're going to, in the future, we will be so relaxed and so kind to each other so there are going to be no other emotions? So that was the context. That makes sense. For sure. There's also one other question I had, which, sorry, like I sent them like rapid fire, but I was really interested in the like commercial offerings, let's say, of the corporation. Like I entered right when you were talking about the kind of five minute digital detox offering. Oh. I think it has something to do with a tree. I remember seeing that on your screen. And oh, I was just yay. wondering like how literal those offerings are like if it's something that you are planning on expanding into like offline circuits or if it's more of like a kind of speculative economy actually right now we are developing this offline tree and before it was just like a part of the narrative and now where we actually building the island with the studio so we think maybe when the person is deciding to have this like detox with offline tree we will try to put him out or them out from the system and just the island you would not be able to access the island for five minutes or so but it's still like on the stage of development cool I like that idea. (laughs) Thanks. Thank thank you, Alice. Thank you, everyone. I think we can maybe wrap up now, If unless, Alice, you had any more you wanted to share. I think I'm fine. I think I finished with what I've started, that the role of speculation is not to uh, propose how it could be, but to offer how it should be or how it should not be. And that's uh, the question I'm asking myself. Alice, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Honestly, I hope one day we will be able to meet in physical space. And it's a pleasure to have everyone here. And let's uh, be friends. And I have this final slide. Wait a second. <laughs> Boom. Let's be friends on Instagram or somewhere else. And welcome to Ukraine or LA, whatever. And what is what else? Maybe somebody has some question about the project or your thoughts about speculation. I would like really uh, like to maybe to discuss some or maybe just uh, we will can switch to Instagram. I'll, I'll contact you on Instagram. Bye. Nice to meet you. Uh, Thank you nice Katie. to meet you. Thank, Thank you Thank everyone you. for joining. Have a great yeah. day. Yeah. Bye-bye. So thank you so much for coming so late. No, it's fine. Okay, Okay. thank you. Bye Bye. to you, Katie.